it is after a long time that we having a classical tournament at the top level and it is none other than the wimbledon of chess tata steel chess tournament where the top players are returning to the board for classical chess the first round of tata steel just finished and today's pairings were magnus carlsen versus levan arodian the world champion and the former world number 2 then vincen kimo versus parham maksudlu gugesh d the young star from india versus ding liren who is going to be playing a world championship match in 3 months time richard rapport versus nodirbek abdul satro wesley so another top player versus jordan van forest the two young stars of india pragnananda versus arjun erigaisi fabiano versus anish giri the evergreen players in the world vishwanathan anand is also hanging out with the boys at uh, tata steel the three young stars along with vishwanathan anand vishi is not playing but he is there to give support to the kids in the first round there were only two wins all the other games were drawn the two wins were by ding liren against gugesh and abdul satro also won against richard rapport so in this video we are going to have a look at the game between ding liren and gugesh d ding liren because he is playing in a world championship soon must be really trained and focused to win this let's see how the game went it was a thrilling game ding liren absolutely crushed gugesh in this game the game started with d4 from gugesh knight f6 c4 pawn e6 knight f3 b6 pawn g3 so it's a fiancetto variation of the queen's indian which kaspar was also mentioned in his book he has played some games with the white pieces in this line bishop b4 check bishop d2 and then the bishop goes back just forcing the bishop to come to this diagonal instead of the long diagonal which white would have wanted to bishop g g2 castles castles pawn d5 now knight c3 c6 bishop f4 knight d7 takes takes knight e1 so gugesh plays a slightly interesting move here he is basically rerouting the knight to d3 and then preparing e4 with that move so rook e8 knight d3 knight f8 and now bishop g5 knight e6 attacking the bishop bishop takes bishop takes and pawn e3 knight c5 and this was a very nice move by ding liren basically he is taking advantage of the pin if knight takes knight you would lose the exchange and there is a threat on the knight so you'll have to defend this or take here so you can't defend this anymore so you, taking is the only option so he takes allowing bishop takes c3 so black is already slightly better gugesh has been out prepped rook c1 saving the rook but queen f6 queen c2 attacking the bishop again but pawn d4 pawn takes pawn takes and now rook e e1 rook d1 rook d8 pawn takes bishop takes knight f4 so basically here instead of knight f4 gugesh should have first taken on c6 bishop takes c6 and after rook c8 then you can go knight f4 because then the knight has this square available to him but in this case after knight f4 just g5 knight moves queen h6 bishop f3 so white is already getting super extended pawn c5 that bishop gets solidified over here look at the two bishops nice pawn g4 pawn f5 so ding is not afraid to open up his king he wants to break this structure over here knight g3 and now pawn takes if bishop takes then why black can just do bishop b7 and then the diagonal is blacks and it would be terrible for white so he plays knight f5 queen f6 bishop e4 but now came h5 the pawn is just rolling forward b4 king f8 this is a move of a brave warrior he feels that the king is safer on a dark square over here away from any fork or checks and away from any check from the bishop or queen the king finds a nice safe place here it's a tough decision to make because that could also have been a nice square for the rook to use on the f2 f2 pawn but yeah he decides to go to f8 with the king king h8 was also another possibility which would not have affected rook f8 so king f8 pawn a3 gugesh just makes a waiting move there but then comes h4 black is just pushing forward rook e1 and here came the absolute killer 
Ding decided this is the moment to strike. White's pieces are already extended. Black pieces are active. The bishops, the queen, the rooks. And here came the blow to Gugesh's position. Can you find it? Ding played rook takes bishop. The point being, after queen takes, you can't take here, you can't do rook e8. What's the point? A beautiful move. Bishop to d3. Absolutely beautiful move because you can't take the bishop. There is a discovered check from the rook and you lose the queen. So this is why Gugesh played queen e6. But then just takes, takes. And now material-wise, you get the piece back. So you have, you have two bishops for the rook. So ding is up material. And now rook takes b6, pawn g3. Takes, takes and more pressure on f2. So now it's a matter of just converting. And here Ding played the last move of the game. He played bishop h3. Not allowing the king to escape anywhere. And pawn into f2 is coming and then promotion. For example, if you play something like rook b1, just takes. And when king moves, just promote. You win an exchange, which means you will be up by a piece at the end. And that is how Ding won this game. So there were some beautiful moves in this game, starting with knight c5 in the opening. This was the first beautiful move, knight c5. Maybe preparation, this is already 16th move just. And then came this killer move, rook takes e4. And the idea is even more beautiful, bishop d3. This is a hugely tactical blow. And that's what got Gugesh.